Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Excel Video 183. I'm Nate Moore, and I want to play a little bit more with Index and Match today. But first, let me show you what I'm doing. I've got collections by CPT code here for some random CPT code, and I've got a whole bunch of pairs down here from pair A, a down to pair S, and I've got um, a reimbursement rate from a contract that I'm getting paid for this CPT code for all these different pairs. And now I'm going to use some of the basic uh, functions that we've talked about before to understand my reimbursement for this CPT code. The total amount of reimbursement across all the codes is some, that's not really relevant here because hopefully you're getting paid by these pairs more than once, but just to show you this, that's how sum works, it's just sum in the range from B3 to B21. We can count how many pairs we have for this code, we'll just count from B3 to B21, and that gives me 19. We can take the average from B3 to B21. Here's where the index and match comes in and is, is helpful. I, if I use max from B3 to B21, Excel is going to go down here through here and it's going to find the 338.23. And when it does find that, then what we're using index and match for over here is we're going to say, okay, my index is from A3 to B21. That's the range I'm going to look in. What am I going to find? I want to find D8. Well, what's D8? D8 is the max. That I've, I've looked up the max with this function. Now I want to know whose max it is. Who's the pair that's paying me the max on this CPT code? So I'm going to look for D8, and where am I going to look? From B3 to B21. And when I find it, then I'll know how far down in my range to go and just go over one when, from column A to column B. And that tells me, okay, I've got what I need to look this thing up and say, okay, I know it's going to be pair in. I know that when I come down here and find 338.23, the first one over is payer in. I've got it. I can do the same thing with the min. I know that the worst payer on this CPT code is paying me 201.85. When I go down the list, 201.85 is there. And so what's my index and match going to do? It's going to say same range, find D9, find this min number, find the 201.85. And when you do, that's how many uh, rows down I want to go and how many columns. Well, I'm in the first column again. I just want to see payer L there for 201.85. Median is another function I'm not sure we spend a lot of time with. Median will just tell you the middle number in a range of numbers. Sometimes if your data is skewed, average doesn't really tell you the, or give you a good feel for what the middle is because if you've got a ton of high numbers or a ton of low numbers and try to find the average, if most of your data is on one side or the other, it's going to throw you off. And so what median will do is it will just find you the middle. And the way median works from a statistical point of view is if you have an odd number, say you have five values, it's just going to find the middle value, number three. It's going to order them and take the third one. If you had six, what it's going to do is it's going to order them and, and take the, the middle number, or it's going to take the middle two numbers, three and four, value three and value four, take the average of those two and give you the answer. That's why I have these two notes here. The first note is, hey, it only finds the first match. If there were two pairs in here, let's just cheat. 338.23 and pair in. If I came in here and put 338.23, look how it changes to pair A now. Even though I've got 338.23 down here at pair in, what index and match is going to find is the first example. If there's more than one, it's only going to tell you the first one. So let me undo that. See, we're back to pair in. The other thing I want to show you is median won't always find a match. If we had an additional value in here, or if we changed, um, let's say we want the median from B3 to B20 instead. Now I've got an even number. Excel is going to take, put them in order, take the, the two numbers that are in the middle and average the two and get 259.25. Well, that's not going to, you're never going to find that average in here. You'll only find the exact median if there is an odd number because if there's an odd number Excel is not averaging anything in the middle and it will actually find this. I just wanted you to see median and how index and match might help you use this. Last thing I wanted to show you in this uh, video is something easy I just wanted to make sure you were clear on. If you scroll down here and you try to do a count, remember this count form here just said hey give me a count from B3 to B21 tell me how many values there are. If you do a count from A3 to A21, it will tell you zero. And you're like, hey, you know, there's way more than zero in this range. I mean, there's 19 of them. I know that. The way it works is the count function only counts numbers. If you want to count something besides numbers, like text, like I have here, you have to use this count A. See so a count and then an A. What that function will do is counts the cells that aren't empty. Um, they don't have to be numbers. That's the difference between count and count A. 
that's what I want to show you in Excel video 183. There's, it, it gets a little bit complicated because I threw the median in there, but I wanted you to see how once you've got some of these values, not only can you calculate some statistics about your data, but you can use index and match and tell you which one was the highest, which one was the lowest, and some of those kind of things that may be helpful for you as you do dashboards or other reports. That's what I want to show you in Excel video 183. Thanks for watching.